fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. Dan Ree, the Lone Ranger's 14-year-old nephew, and his horse Victor were in a large cave. They were there to await the return of the masked man and Tonto, who had gone to a nearby town on special business. It was dusk outside, but in the cave it was quite dark. Dan had been lying on a blanket dozing when he was roused by the clatter of hoofs on the rocky floor of the canyon outside the cave. Golly, Victor, maybe that's our friends. No, no, that doesn't sound like Scout and Silver. Quiet, boy, quiet. Someone else is coming this way. You and I'd better get to the rear of the cave. Can't take chances on being seen. We might have to answer too many questions. Come on, Victor, come on, boy. Oh, 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 oh. Well, here we are, Pedro. This here's a cave I was telling you about. See, si, my friend, Senor Pete. Are we follow? Nope, I reckon we got away clean. Ah, by Ned, I'm glad to see that there cave. I'd sooner stay there from now on than go back to that there circle bar. Only time, Pete, I try to tell you it's no good to work. We get the job, what happens? We're sure that. We're most killed. Better it is to stay away from work. Yeah, that's just fine. The only trouble is I got the habit of eating, si. which same calls for cash. Well, dismount, Pedro, and lead your horse into the cave. <laughs> lead the way, my good friend. I'll follow you. Think of them. Come on, man. That rat of Pedro, it was all your fault. Huh? We had good jobs at the circle bar. So you went coyoting around. You blame Pedro for the trouble. That's wrong. You I were hope the... we weren't followed into the cave. Oh, no, amigo. I don't think anybody can follow us. Well, here we are. This will do. It's a big cave. Also dark. Yeah, I'll strike a match. There is water to be had? Plenty. There's a spring here in the cave. The Lone Ranger showed it to me. The Lone Ranger did, huh? Yep. You remember me telling you, Pedro, as before you met him. He helped me out of jam a few years back. He sure was good to me. Uh, I'd give him all I got in the world. Just a minute. Hey, what? Goodness. You can't see me. I'm back in the cave. But I can see both of you. Who are you? Now, we don't mean no harm. We're just law-abiding citizens who've got more trouble than a bobtailed horse in fly time. You just spoke of the Lone Ranger. Well, he's my friend. He showed me this here cave. I guess you must be all right. Light that match. I'll bring you a candle. Good. Here's a candle. Well, it's only the boy. Uh, I'm nearly 15. 
My name's Stan Reed. Well, you can call me Pete. This here's my pal, Pedro. I am honored of you. How do you do? Hey, by Ned, now I get it. I remember hearing about a lad by the name of Dan Reed who travels once in a while with a lone ranger. And I remember him telling about Pete and Pedro. Well, my boy, we had bad luck. We had jobs. And you two were working? Sure. And uh, what sort of thing is he hearing about us? Say, uh, Daniel, where is your masked friend? Where can we see him? We sure need his help right now. You know there's trouble piling up at the Circle Bar. He'll be back here. But maybe not before tomorrow. Oh, doggone. What happened at the Circle Bar? Well, Pedro here, him and me got new jobs and figured we'd like to look around the Circle Bar spread. That is, Pedro was the one who wanted to snoop oh, around. Oh, Mago, you all the time... Anyhow, the ranch is owned by a widow named Pettengill. She's living in a small house that's sort of new. And right nearby is the old ranch house that's not being used. With his cyclone cellar. Cyclone cellar? Yep, under the old house. Well, we figured, I mean to say, Pedro here figured to look that cellar over. We went there and done so. I wish we hadn't. Why? Well, account of what we seen there and what happened next. What did you see? Rifles. Case after case full of army rifles bearing the government marking. Then the shooting began. Yep. Someone opened up, so we lit out in fast. Wait. Oh, golly. What's the matter? There's a United States Marshal in Red Oak who's trying to learn about some army rifles. Someone around here has been buying them. Oh, my. The Lone Ranger and Tana went into town to meet him. They're going to help him. It's no wonder we were sure that we thought too much. You've got to go back and keep an eye on those rifles. Oh, sure, not me. No, no, I'm But now that you've seen the rifles, they'll probably be moved to another hiding place. Why, we'd be shot if we went back there. Well, then... Then I'll go. Now, hold on, lad. I'm not known at the Circle Bar. I can get a job there. Now, don't do it, Daniel. There's some mighty tough hombres on that spread. I won't get into trouble. You stay here until the Lone Ranger comes. Tell him what you told me and tell him where I've gone. Oh, he'll have my hide for letting you go. No, he won't. He'll be mighty grateful to you for what you've discovered. Well, I sure owe him a plenty. You know, many's the time he got me out of trouble. And Pedro can say the same. Yes, sir. We're both mighty deep in debt to that masked man. Dan reached the Circle Bar soon after darkness and found little difficulty in securing a job. It was later the same evening when the Lone Ranger and Tonto made their plans with the United States Marshal, a grim-faced man named Daniels. The three were in a clump of cottonwoods at the edge of town. Tonto, don't do this unless you understand that there'll be great risk. Me savvy. Both Tonto and I will go a long way to keep the stolen rifles out of the hands of Indians. Mm, that right. Oh, uh, by the way, Daniels... What makes you think the rifles are somewhere in this vicinity? Well, it's a long story of tireless investigation. We've had a lot of men at work on the case. I see. We finally got confessions from two guards who looked the other way when the rifles were stolen. They could tell very little, however. They didn't know who paid them. Oh? They were paid in paper money. It came through the mail. And it was mailed from here, from Red Oak. You said you thought the rifles were still under cover. Yes, at least none have been seen in the hands of Indians. And we assume that they were stolen to sell to the Indians. Well, Daniels, my instructions from Washington said to help you in any possible way. You approve my plan to try to smoke out someone? It might work. All right. Now, Tonto, you know your part. Mm, that's right. And you understand the danger. Uh-huh. Here's the gold. Put it in your pocket and head for the cafe in Red Oak. Let everybody there know you have a lot of cash and that you're waiting to meet someone. Uh, you'll keep an eye on things, mister. Yes, Daniels. And I guess we're ready. I'll see the sheriff, and he can make the arrest. In the Red Oak Cafe, the bartender was busy polishing glassware and serving his customers. His face was without expression until he saw the stately figure of the banker. Oh, Mr. Gregson. Hey, day, I don't often see you in here. What do you have? Uh, clear soda water. Oh, doggone it, there's an Indian in the place. Hope none of the boys make the mistake of serving him drinks. Especially right now when there's United States Marshal in town. Yes, I talked to him. Who, the Indian? No, no, the Marshal. Looking for a shipment of rifles that were stolen from the Army. No, is that so? Yes. Yeah, there's your soda water. Now, Indian, I now can't me, give you... Uh... Me got gold here. Well, even so, I can't serve you nothing. Uh, me want paper money. You want folding money? Uh, you mean you want to change the gold for paper? That's right. Here, sack. 
You weigh. Mm. Is that sack full of gold? Isn't that right? Mm. Very interesting. Just a minute, Baldy. Let me see that sack. Now, Sheriff, I wasn't selling the engine anything. Never mind that, Baldy. You, engine, where'd you get all that gold? Well, me come here to meet man. Make trade. Yeah? What kind of business? Who'd you come here to meet? Me not tell that. Now, don't get proddy, Redskin. I can take you to jail and hold you for questioning as a suspicious character. Me not talk. You not make me talk. All right, then. The possession of that gold is reason for holding you on suspicion. Uh, wouldn't you say so, Banker? Yes, yes, Sheriff. I quite agree with you. Come on, Redskin. And you give back gold. You not take gold. Stop you struggling and do as I say. If you're on the level, you got nothing to worry about. Now, come along. The Lone Ranger and Daniels were outside the cafe, not far from the swinging doors. It was too dark for anyone farther away than the marshal to see the Lone Ranger's mask beneath the brim of his hat. Someone's coming out of the cafe. Yes, Toto and the sheriff. Oh, oh, steady, boy. Do you happen to know either of those men who are dismounting at the hitch rail? No, do you? No, I just wondered if you did. I don't want to stay in town long. We've got a busy day tomorrow. Yeah, we got that new tenderfoot to break in. Hey, we'll just wet our whistles and then head back with a circle bar. That new boy's young, but he looks strong. Yeah, I didn't get his name, did you? Reed, Dan Reed. Daniels, what's the matter? I got to leave you. Circle There's one thing that comes ahead of everything else. Got to get to Silver and Ride. But say it. You said it because I love all the. Oh, no. Racing away from town, the Lone Ranger headed for the canyon. In record time, he drew rein at the mouth of the cave where he had left Dan Reed. Dismounting, he ran into the cave, then stopped short when he saw his old friends, Pete and Pedro. Pete, Pedro! Uh, you got here at last. We're sure glad to see you. Amigo. Hey, senor. Well, where's Dan Reed? Well, he read the circle bar. He told us to wait here for you. Why? Well, we found some rifles in the cellar of the old house. And then someone shot at us and we lit out. We come here to hide and found young Dan. Rifles, you say? Si, senor. Well, Dan knew you was interested, so he went there to keep an eye on him. Say, where you going? We got more to tell you. Later, easy, big fella. One fella there. While he rode, the Lone Ranger made hurried plans. He pulled off his mask and tucked it beneath his shirt. Then he stopped and dismounted long enough to take materials from a saddlebag and darken his complexion. He looked like a different man when he once more leaped to the saddle and rode on toward the circle bar. As he neared the house, easy, he heard an easy. alarm being sounded. A woman was yes, shouting, please, and men were rushing toward the smaller yes, of two houses. Come here to the house. Something terrible has happened. The Lone Ranger dismounted oh, and moved toward the house with the ranch hands. Stuart, bring all the boys inside the house. Get them all. We're all here, Miss Pattengill. All but Slim and Lefty. They went to Red Oak for the evening. Where's that new boy I hired this evening? Here I am, Mrs. Pattengill. Well, come in here. Come into the house right away. Stuart, all the cowhands aren't here. I told you about Lefty and Slim. Then there was those two galoots that lit out, Pete and Pedro. They lit out? When did they do that? Well, it was, uh, it was before dark, ma'am. Before I lighted the bunkhouse lamps. Didn't even take their gears. Then they're the crooks. Durick, I've been robbed. What? Robbed of all the money I'd saved up to pay off my mortgage to Mr. Gregson. I had it all together, and those two crooks stole it. Doggone, no wonder they lit out so fast. Miss Pettengill, I've tried to warn you about hiring men. I'm, I'm your foreman. Why don't you let me do the hiring? Oh, me, I suppose I should. But, Durick, when someone needs a job, I can't turn him away. We'll find those two crooks. But wait, well, those two... Sure. What's that, boy? Oh, um... Boys... Get your horses and get them saddled. We're going to spread out and find those two. Meet me at the corral for fine lord as we go gunning for those. Crows. All right, Dory. You, Reed, wait a minute. Yes? You're not going with them, man. You go to the bunkhouse and wait for me. I want to ask you a few questions. You better have the right answers. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
now to continue our story. Durek, the circle bar foreman, went to the corral with the ranch hands to instruct them in the search for Pete and Pedro, accused of stealing Mrs. Pettengill's money. Dan Reed, as ordered, went to the bunkhouse to await Durek and answer questions. Answer a few questions. What do you mean by that? Dan. You. I recognize the clothes, but your face. I thought I'd better wear a disguise when I came here to look for you. Did Pete and Pedro tell you I was here? Yes. As soon as I arrived, I heard about the robbery. I was at the door of the house while you were inside with the ranch hands. I know Pete and Pedro didn't steal that money. They ran away because someone fired at them when they discovered army rifles. Yes, Dan. I thought those might be the rifles you were looking for. And I thought I'd better come out here and try to keep an eye on them to see they weren't moved. All right, Dan. Someone on this ranch knows a lot about those rifles. Whoever it is, he doesn't want Pete and Pedro to tell what they know. You know what I think? What, sir? I think Mrs. Pettengill's money was stolen, so there'd be a search for our friends. Well, they'd probably be shot on sight. What are you writing, sir? Dan, we've got to stop that manhunt. The foreman is meeting his men at the corral. I'm going to try to hold their attention to give you a chance to get Victor out of the corral as quietly as possible. Then what? Don't take time to saddle your horse. Ride bareback. Ride to Red Oak in a hurry and give this note to the sheriff. He'll tell you why Tano's in jail. Tano in jail? Yes. And if you meet a United States Marshal named Daniels, trust him. All right, here's your note. Come now, Dan. I'll take Silver and join that group. So many men, I don't think I'll be noticed. I'll go around to the far side of the corral and get Victor. All right, Silver. Come on, boy. Easy. Yeah, we get Boys, if Mrs. Pettengill don't get the cash back, she'll lose the ranch and we'll all be out of a job. There's no doubt but what those two galoots are the ones that took it. They wouldn't have hired you if they'd have been innocent. That's right, Jorick. I told you how to split up. We'll reach pairs of trap. It's out of the question to trail them. So be on the lookout for signs of any place they might be camping. Now then. Now just a minute. Hey, who's this Who are you? Here? I've been to Red Oak. What about it? Just this. There might be a connection between something that happened there and the robbery that took place here. Who are you? What's the difference? Who's the top hand around here? I am. You're a Derrick? You got something to say, say it and be quick. We got work to do. What I have to say needn't be hurried, Derrick. You don't have to send the men out. How's that? You'll understand when I've finished. Well, then get started. An Indian came into Red Oak a little while ago. He had quite a bit of gold. He did? He wouldn't tell the sheriff where he got it. Do you suppose he stole it from Mrs. Pettengill? Why, I, I don't know. How much did he have? I don't think it was weighed or counted. Well, he didn't. Hey, you kid, where are you going? Let him go, Derek. I told him to clear out. You did? Say, who are you anyhow? We went through that once before. Hey, you, I told you. Derek. Yeah, he's got away. Let him go. Go on into town with me and bring the sheriff and the Indian back here. I'm not leaving this ranch unprotected. Unprotected? With these men here? I don't know who I can trust. None of them been here long. Then why not send them into town? They can tell the sheriff what's happened. That's an idea. You heard that, boys. Go tell the sheriff the whole story. Bring him and the prisoner back here. Now get going. Right Get around. Get around. Get around. So, you're the only one that's been here for any length of time. What about it? That was pretty flimsy, Derek. What do you mean? You know, of course, that the money the Indian had wasn't stolen from Mrs. Pettengill. Just what are you getting at, mister? Maybe if you'd left the ranch, one of the boys would have been curious about the cyclone cellar in the old house. The cyclone cellar? You wouldn't want to take a chance on having someone see it, would you? I'd never go near the old house. i never been in the cellar. We'll take a look at it now. See here, if you won't tell me who you are, I'm not... We'll... Gonna... We'll look at it, Derek. Oh. So that's the way it is, huh? Yeah. That's right. Now, take your gun so no one gets hurt. Now, look. Mrs. Pettengill gave strict orders about the old house. She moved out when her husband died, and it hasn't been entered since. Maybe the cellar can be reached from outside the house. We look around. All right. That's the way it's got to be. The old house is right in back of the new one. I'll show you where. There is a way into the old cellar from the outside. I didn't realize the houses were so close. I don't see how a shot could be fired in the old cellar without being heard by Mrs. Pettengill. What shot? Don't you know? I sure wish I knew what you were driving at. Let's wait until we're in the cellar. Here's the outside door. Double doors, wide enough for a wagon. Open one. All right. Pitch 
dark in there. Here's a candle and matches. Light up. All right. There. Ground slams down. A wagon could be run in here. Hey, there is a wagon over there. Go ahead and we'll see what's inside. Damn. Good for footprints, on huh, Derek? Hey, that's right. That'll prove I never was in here before. Look in that wagon. Rifles. Cases of them. Are you surprised? I sure am. Hey, this is not... No, what the... You hit? No, the candle was knocked out. This way. That hits the bottles or something. The door's closed. Look, you can't see out there. Keep low. Give me my gun. I'll return that fire. No. Kill that marksman and we won't find out who's running the rifle deal. What of it? You get us if we don't get him. Be quiet a minute. Whoever you are, you can't get away. There'll be others here in a few minutes. All right, we'll wait. Hug the ground, Derek. You can't get us in total darkness. For what seemed an endless length of time, the tension in total darkness continued. At the slightest sound of movement, the heavy gun would bark in the cyclone cellar. But every shot went wild because of a simple trick by the Lone Ranger. While he spoke clearly, telling Durek to hug the ground, his hand guided the foreman to the top of the cases in the wagon. The shots were low, far too low to find the mark, but the killer was determined and kept firing. It became a battle of wits. The Lone Ranger might have shot at the flames from the unknown enemy's gun, but instead he bided time. He kept close to Durek, and in the darkness trusted that he would not be made the victim of a chance bullet. In the meantime, Dan Reed had delivered the message in Red Oak, then hurried to the cave where Pete and Pedro waited. The marshal sent me here. He said for me to take both of you to the ranch. Oh, no, Cherie, not by a jug for oh, no, But friend. the Lone Ranger's at the ranch. Oh. Well, that makes it different. Come on, Pedro, get your horse. Yeah. We've got to travel. The spasmodic gunfire in the cyclone cellar continued until the sound of horses' hoofs came through the night, and then it stopped. The group of horsemen with Marshal Daniels in charge came to a halt and dismounted at Mrs. Pettengill's small house. You gonna rap on the door, Marshal? Yes, and I'll do the talking. The rest of you boys keep still. What is this here Redskins gilly? The sheriff put him in my custody. Oh, thank goodness, thank goodness you boys have... Who's this? The name is Daniels, ma'am. United States Marshal. Oh, do come in. There's been the most awful gunfight going on. Where gunfight? It was muffled, but I knew it was guns. Over on the cellar of the old house, I don't know what it means. I do. I've been so frightened. I went to the bunkhouse, but none of the men were there. Please look in the cellar of the old house and see uh, what... Oh, we can tell you what happened. You bet we can. Uh, boss, what happened? That man's mask. Mask? Don't mercy me. Speak up, Derek. You're the foreman. He put his mask on in the cellar. And I don't blame him for suspecting me. Of what? Boys, there's a wagon load of brand new army rifles in the cellar. Stolen. Found them, huh? Yes, Marshal. Mask man thought I was working with someone to sell them to the Redskins. And I can see why he thought so. I was the only one that had been on this ranch any length of time. And then when I wouldn't leave here tonight, m looked more never like me. It's nearly a costly mistake. And then he took me down there. The shooting started. We were trapped. And if he hadn't have signaled me to climb onto the wagon at the same time he said to hug the ground, we'd have been killed by the spray of bullets on the floor. I guess the killer thought we were dead. Where is this killer? The ground below is very damp. Look at our shoes. Yeah, muddy. Now look at Mrs. Pettengill's shoes. Oh, you, Mrs. Pettengill. All right, you're smart. Don't any of you move. Hey, what? I'm leaving here on the handiest horse, and I don't aim to be caught. You won't get far, Mrs. Pettengill. I'll risk that. One thing I wondered about, your stolen money. I suppose you faked that so you could pretend you were going to lose the ranch and discharge all the men before your customer came to get the rifles. You're a smart guesser. It also gave you an excuse to hunt down two harmless men who had seen the rifles. I'm not admitting a thing. It doesn't matter, Mrs. Pettengill. You see, banker Gregson is already in custody. What? He stepped right into a little trap when he called on this Indian in jail. He thought the money the Indian had was to be used to buy rifles. After questioning, he broke down completely and confessed that he was offering contraband rifles for sale. Why, that... He told that, us you were the one who engineered the robbery of the rifles. That's a downright lie. Gregson is the one who engineered it. 
He's the one who can name a couple of no-account crooks that did the stealing and brought them here to my place. Thanks for the information. Maybe you've got Gregson, but you haven't got me. I'm leaving here, and I'll drop the first man to come through this door. Hey, Pedro. Look at Mrs. Pedicum holding the gun. Oh, hey. I'll the take that gun. No, 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 let me go, let me go. Uh, uh, and now you won't be firing on any of us. You fool, Pete. Huh? Why did you have to come just now? Well, Pedro, looks like we can never do the right thing. Well, you did the right thing this time. Huh? What she here, mister? This is Mrs. Pettengill you're holding the gun on. That's right. She's under arrest. Yeah. I'll admit that, mister. Maybe you've got me for this job, but maybe I won't be in too long when I tell how Gregson managed everything. Held a mortgage to dangle over my head to... Help me make up my mind. Well, that'll be for the law to decide. Hey, boys, where did that masked man go? He and the engine stepped out a minute ago. Hey, there they are over yonder. Dan is with them. Hey, there, Dan. We're traveling, Pete. We meet again, Daniel. Come on, fill this. Get him up, Get him up. That masked man. <laughs> Marshal, I'd sure like to know who that masked man is. I can't tell you his name, but he's called the Lone Ranger. <laughs> This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's story was written by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Mm -hmm.